research lies at the intersection of political theory um, and participative forms of uh, research. She has written widely on uh, uh, different ways of knowing that emerge from collaborative, participatory um, and action research. Um, her work has combined the personal um, through narrative storytelling and imaginative methods to enable personal articulation uh, with developing a new form of public sphere uh, via inquiry-led forms of debate and discussion. Helen's research and teaching interests directly flow from her practical experience. Uh, before joining the School of Arts, um, his, Art History um, and Cultural Studies at the University of uh, no, sorry. Um, it's a ridiculous title. The School of Fine Art, History of Art and Cultural Studies. So I'll, oh, yeah. I'll free you from having to. Thank you. I think you have. So that's how bad it is. So. <laughs> um, before that, <laughs> Helen uh, worked at the International Centre for Cultural and Heritage Studies at Newcastle University um, on a research on the Arts and Humanities Research Council um, research project on place, uh, art, and identity called the Arts on. Uh, Science side. Yeah. Um, this project involved people from across uh, the Northeast and led to a permanent <coughs> display um, called Northern Spirit 300 Years uh, of Art at the Northeast, which is ongoing uh, um, still now at the um, Lane Lang Art Gallery. Okay. Um, Helen held a, a museum practice um, fellowship at the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institution. Um, and she used participatory research methods to explore intellectual access to museums. Um, more recently, she's been working on a number of research projects with museums, heritage and place as focus. In York, Helen is involved in staging a large-scale um, public engagement process um, in key areas of urban regeneration and city-level development. Um, um, another very interesting project that she's going to talk about during this talk as well is the Bradford's National Museum project connecting Bradford and uh, the National Science and Media Museum. Um, Helen is working with the museum staff, other researchers and a number of project partners um, to explore connections between the museum and Bradford. Um, linking all of the key issues, Bradford Museum, the museum community, science and technology, which is an exploration or relational approaches, reaction led of experimental um, methods. So now um, Helen is going to talk more about the project in Bradford uh, during, the, during the talk, Museums and Non-Representational Politics. And uh, she's going to also explore new decision-making models, uh, which combine professional, participatory, and um, action-led forms of decision. So please join me in welcoming Helen. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation and the organisational work you've done to bring us all together. And it's uh, really wonderful to be here and have this kind of conversation. So. Um, I think there's a really nice flow from the conversation we've already started in the morning to what I'm going to open up for us to talk more about now. Um, actually, uh, Bella and I were talking about Brexit over breakfast, <laughs> which might be where the That's why I issue came it. from. And we were sort of saying there's something about Brexit, isn't there, which is on one hand it is like this fundamental philosophical, political question about who we are as people and how we live together. On the other hand, it's incredibly technical about the backstop and stuff to do with the custom human, which none of us really knew anything about before this whole thing started. So something there about big questions and the technical realisation of what that means. And I think there's something about that dynamic that open up in our discussion now between some of the big underpinning political questions of museums, but also some of the everyday practices of museum work that allow us to do some of the things we've been already talking about this morning and to work with some lots of different backgrounds to enrich and shape the museum. Um, that's what I'm going to talk about. So, I mean, what Brexit is, is many things, but I think it definitely is a kind of crisis in different forms of representation, both political representation and the sense epistemic forms of representation, how we represent people in different ways, the kind of question we start to talk about in terms of what the museum's role might be there. In terms of political representation, the referendum was used in the first place to resolve a particular party political issue within the Conservative Party. 
Um, it seems very much that Westminster can't resolve the implications that have been opened up by the referendum. There are certain forms of elite argument that David Cameron seemed pretty confident that he would be able to enact and land were not shown to be the case. And alongside Brexit was this debate opening up, um, Michael Gove being the famous poster boy for this, around questions of expertise um, and the extent to which making decisions on behalf of the wider public carries legitimacy. Um, he slightly misquoted Michael Gove, to be slightly fair to him, but still, yeah. that kind of indicated that sort of debate about um, about professionals, about public service and decision making on behalf of wider populations. But I think it's also been raised awareness of some of the issues around representing people in different ways, which is obviously a concern to museums, which I'll come on to in a minute. We took, as we touched on at the end of the last session, while there are still many things I'm sure we don't know about the contingencies that led certain people to vote leave and remain within the referendum. It is very likely that economic inequalities and educational inequalities are a crucial part of that picture. And um, so this has led to questions about whether working class communities' experiences have been given enough airtime within the national debate, or equally that whether the fact that the NHS is fundamentally enabled by migration from the European Union has been given enough airtime within our public debate. Either way, this question about you know, whose experiences are being represented in our public debate has definitely been raised through Brexit. I think it does pose certain challenges for museums. It would pose a political challenge for museums because they have worked through professional delegated form of decision making. It's the idea that a professional can make decisions on behalf of the collection that's held on trust for everybody in that area and future generations. Um, so it's that kind of public service trustee model of professionalism. <coughs> It poses challenges because they very much sought to represent histories, communities, identities, and more and more of that's happened over the last 40 years. You know, really fantastic and important work. And because museums have sought to be for everyone, even though we always know they never have been. Um, so these are the kinds of challenges that really Brexit does require us to re explore and repose to ourselves in different ways now, I think. So I think this speaks to some of the four core representational claims that underpin the, the logic of the museums traditionally. The idea of representation, to represent humanity in the world in some way. Access, so for me, museums to seek to know about their audiences demographically, so they can know who comes and who doesn't come, so they can increase accessibility to everybody. For conservation, this idea that museums can serve collections and other resources for everybody now and future generations. And they use the resources on behalf of the public good. 